Welcome. Today's guest is a number one international best-selling author, Emmy-nominated filmmaker, multiple Telly Awards recipient, and former producer and copywriter for major broadcast TV and cable news networks. Her Emmy-nominated documentary, My Life with Rosie, is about the activism of her cousin, Rosa Parks. It has won numerous best documentary titles at film festivals across the country. Her international best-selling companion book, My Life with Rosie, A Bond Between Cousins, has been named Best Children's Book About Black History. She recently released her second documentary, Authentic Conversations, Deep Talk with the Masters, featuring Jack Canfield, Patty Aubrey, and Kate Butler. She is also the host of the weekly interview show, Everybody with Angela Williamson, which discusses diversity within education, the arts, and people. A dedicated philanthropist proudly carrying on her cousin's legacy, she harnesses the power of her 25 years of experience in education and media for social good through the involvement in projects and organizations that focus on improving the communities they serve. Please welcome the incomparable Dr. Angela Williamson. Welcome to the show, Dr. Williamson. It is so great to have you here with us today. It is such an honor and thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. And I am looking forward to our authentic conversation. Absolutely. Now, those are some pretty big family shoes to fill. How has being a relative of Rosa Parks changed your life? At first, when I saw her, I was definitely in awe. If you just see pictures of me with her, I my face is just, wow, this is a woman in my history books that I learned about in elementary school, and I'm sitting right next to her. You don't realize um, you know, the things that sometimes our history books, they try to educate us, but you, they can't give us everything. I was that person. I didn't realize that what I thought I knew about Rosa Parks was just the tip of the iceberg of everything that this woman um, had done up until the point that I met her and what her legacy continues to do today. Yeah, I mean, we we hear her name in that moment and often forget that there's a lifetime before and a lifetime after. A lifetime of experiences, a lifetime of hopes and dreams and fears, a lifetime of of wanting to make a difference or uh, or feeling the injustice. So I can only imagine the conversations that unfolded, the authentic conversations that unfolded between you as, as she shared her story with you. And, you know, it's really, I mean, this really shows the true legacy of Rosa Parks. But her legacy started with Aunt Carolyn. And when the story started coming to me, I realized that my history books missed something. But this is a woman that poured into so many young people. But that connection that she had with Aunt Carolyn is what would really start me to understand that there's more that was that needs to be written and told about Rosa Parks. And it would take me a long time to do that, but the stories started in 1998 and continued for at least 17 years before I decided I needed to share this story with the world. It was just sharing over dinner, hearing Aunt Carolyn tell me these stories, and then little stories that would just start to come out over the years. But it really hit 
I would have to say it, it escalated to something bigger. And March of 2015, it was a, a really sad day, a sad moment in the Williamson family because my father-in-law, um, who is the patriarch, the older brother, he passes away. And when he passes away, um, everyone has to come to California because we want to say goodbye to our patriarch at this point. And in doing that, Aunt Carolyn and Aunt Alice would stay with me. And, and at that point, 17 years later, and maybe it's because it was at a time in my life where I was ready to really listen to these stories. So it sounds like everyone coming together in California was really the impetus that launched the documentary. You're so right about that. When my father-in-law passed away in March, 2015, it was really a dark time for the Williamson family. And we, know, we knew at that point we had lost an important part of our family. But with that, we all came together We because the aunts had to fly out here into California from Detroit and Atlanta. That's where Aunt Alice lived and still lives today. And, but spending that time with Aunt Carolyn really started to get me to pivot, to realize that these little bits of stories that I had heard um, over the years there needs to be something done with them because it, I knew for me, it had changed my outlook of how much I already respected Rosa Parks, but I felt her struggle through her entire journey to um, make human rights an issue for her and to fight against injustice. And then um, as a mother, I, you know, it's my responsibility as a mother to, to capture this legacy. And then the, you know, the educator in me always comes out and says, you know, everybody in education should know this. And, and educators, especially because at the time I, I was an adjunct um, professor and I knew that I needed research. And I thought, you know what, this is the time that I can do this research and do the research I want. I don't have to get permission through a university because I'm part time and I can just do all of these things into one documentary. I could hit the education side. I could hit the professional side of you know, strengthening who I am as an educator. But then on top of that, as a mom, I can capture this legacy. And then last but not least, maybe just maybe I may be able just to give a little bit part to the world and let them know what a dynamic person Rosa Parks was. I love when the pieces come together and you're able then to really step fully into a new level, right? This, this ability to, to marry the educator, the filmmaker, the family member, the mother, the uh, the person who also had that fire in her belly for for social change and for spotlighting injustice and human rights that you mentioned. So what an incredible opportunity to bring it all together and then put it out into the world. Rosa Parks, in my mind, um, was the original person, you know, actually putting out their authentic conversations to get people involved to say, you know, it doesn't matter what your skin color is. It doesn't matter what your gender, your sexual orientation, your religious background. We all deserve to be treated with respect. And she touched so many lives because she kept that mission in her heart. And wherever she went, she poured that out into young people. Is her service and dedication and commitment to young people the reason why you originally wanted My Life with Rosie to go straight to schools? It, it was. It was. And 
I just thought this would be perfect. Uh, and, and at the time I was thinking higher education because that's what I was working in, but then even high schools. So I was thinking maybe secondary education and then higher education and they can learn more not only about the civil rights movement, but they can learn about what it takes to have a lifelong dedication mm -hmm. to social justice, which was who Rosa Parks was. She didn't just all of a sudden just have a seat one day. No, this was something, and, and people always said, oh, it was planned, it, it, and it really wasn't, but they think it was planned because people knew she was fighting for this before December 1st, 1955. And then she fought well after. In fact, when she got to Detroit, she thought that she was leaving it. And she really, uh, some of the quotes that I've heard is that she said, the struggle continues. <laughs> so she never walked away from it. And I think that's what I wanted people to get and the students to get in, and not just the students, but the educators as well, um, to have those conversations. In fact, the first documentary, which has yet people to see this because it was for education, at the end of each segment had a, I think it was think, or stop, think, and act. And it had questions, thought-provoking questions that instructors, professors, teachers could stop it right there, ask that question, and they can have those conversations. And that was the first version of the documentary, but that's not the documentary that ended up in the film festival circuit because when I was done, the editor and the original composer in Dr. Jean Theo Harris, who um, I based a lot of the knowledge on for this documentary on her book, um, the rebellious life of Mrs. Rosa Parks said this should go to the film festival circuit. But if you're going to do that, there's no way that the film festival directors will stop it and have these conversations. And so I'm like, well, then what do I need to do? They said, you just need to take that one portion out and, and then see about trying your hand at film festivals and see what happens. So what made you say yes to that? You know, <laughs> I think I was at a point in my life that I realized that if someone is taking the time to give you advice and it's good advice, that you need to be humble and listen. And that's one thing that I learned about Rosa Parks. But what I realized was this woman is so humble. And there's a humility that always surrounded Rosa Parks that I really was able to see that when I was interviewing Aunt Carolyn and her friends and Dr. Theo Harris, that I realized that if I wanted more people to learn about the story, I needed to be humble as well. And luckily in my life at the time, there was a lot of things happening that I had no way but to become a humble person. And that was really that humility allowed me to listen to this advice. And that was the best advice I had ever been given up until this point, because it literally is taking that advice that has opened up every door to even me talking to you today. Amazing. We started the conversation by me saying those are some pretty big shoes to fill. And uh seems that you're doing that quite gracefully, quite powerfully. So taking that one step further, let's imagine you've come to the end of your life best lived. You've created and facilitated countless authentic conversations. Your books have changed generations of lives. Your documentaries, have rewritten the history books. What do you want them to say about you? That Dr. Angela Sadler Williamson lived the best life, stirring the pot of all of these authentic conversations 
to change just one life, then my life has been complete. And so it is. So what's next for you? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I wish I could say, oh, I'm, I'm going to be relaxing on a private island somewhere, but I'm not yet. <laughs> I, there's just so much to do here, and I'm so excited about the new documentary. But my summer will be spent, and not only um, going back into the studio per se with the children's book, Ellen Harper has graciously agreed to record a song it's called The Back of the Bus. Harry Belafonte originally recorded that. It was used in the civil rights movement. She's going to record that song just for this children's book. So we're doing a collaboration there. Um, we're still in the pre-production phases of it, but I know we're going into the studio, which I am so honored to have a person like Ellen Harper doing that. And then also in the summer as well, um, one of the things that I wanted to do is I've always been a fan of Guy Post magazine. And so I am now that I have this nonprofit, I will start production with I have my cousin who's a wonderful um, creator director. We will be launching an authentic conversations magazine mm -hmm. and we will start laying that out in the summer as well. So there's a lot of different pieces going on with this new nonprofit. And I just hope that everything that I'm doing, at least with my my one little life, I hope that I'm able to make a positive difference in so many other people's lives. You already are. Thank and you. I have no doubt that you will continue to do so. I know that people are going to want to be there uh, for the live screenings. So how can they find out more do you have a website or somewhere where they can go and register uh, their interest? Absolutely. Right now, everything is through my website. In fact, there is the promo for Authentic Conversations, Deep Talk with the Masters. Um, all the events are listed on that website as well. And because we are still finalizing all the details for the premieres on the East Coast and West Coast, at the very bottom, they can contact me and be part of my email list. And I will email them the information once everything is finalized. Amazing. Now you also mentioned uh, possibly needing some help to really get the message out there, right? To, to get this documentary out on a global scale. So if somebody wants to partner with you or help you with that, shall, should they also go to your website? Absolutely. Um, there's a way that you can, um, you know, financially support the website. There's a GoFundMe there, but also to um, an, another way to, to bring in funds to help um, you know, pay all the people who's been so wonderful to me to, uh, you know, they are charging me, but they're waiting for me to get the funding to pay them. Um, there's other ways to do it too. Um, after the East Coast and West Coast premiere, live screenings is another way too. So if there's someone out there where they know there's a theater to host a live screening, um, I'm looking for those as well. I mean, because that's another way to support this documentary, not only get the message out, but to support the wonderful people that are sharing their talents with me right now, just so that I can get this out there. And that's when you know that your message touches people is that, you know, normally when they charge thousands of dollars to do certain work, they put that on hold for you or give you a discount because they know it's important, especially right now, to get this documentary out there because um, I read an article and it was by the Gallup poll that said that emotionally, we are not at the same levels that we were at before the pandemic. And people right now, they want inspiration. They, they want inspirational um, interviews like Jack, Katie and, and Patty give, but most importantly, Importantly, they need inspiration so that they can move forward. And I think a lot of people right now feel it's so hard to move forward. And that's why I knew I needed to do 
one documentary with all three of them together because they're so impactful that you have no other choice after watching this documentary but to move forward. Absolutely. I, so people can contribute financially. They can contribute by reaching out to host a live screening in their town. Uh, they can reach out to you to find out the details about the East Coast premiere or the West Coast premiere and how they can uh, purchase tickets to attend or to help you promote. They can also reach out to you if they just want to help you spread the word. Uh, this is such important content that you are creating and the fact that you are not only creating this powerful content, but coupling it with the ability to take action. Uh, you know, to your point, that's really resonant right now. People, after two years in the pandemic and all the things that have happened over the last few years and all the things that are currently happening in our world, um, to, you're, you're exactly right. People need inspiration. They also need to know how they can act. They need those tools and resources. And so I thank you for listening to the whisper within your soul. I thank you for stepping up and heeding that call for My Life with Rosie, for the children's books, for the authentic conversations that you are facilitating and for the nonprofit that you have founded to continue the work that you're doing. Now you've shared your website, but how else can people connect with you? How can they support you? And how can they find out more about your upcoming uh, projects and your services? Well, I am definitely, I am all over social media and, I, and you can actually get to a lot of those through the website. So I make life easy for you. But if you want to follow individual projects, Facebook, I love using Facebook for my pages. Authentic Conversations Deep Talk with the Masters has its own Facebook page. So does My Life with Rosie, the documentary and My Life with Rosie, a bond between cousins. And because I actually released this book during a pandemic, and I, I mentioned earlier that I just had my first in-person book signing, I actually read this book um, on the Facebook page for My Life with Rosie, A Bond Between Cousins. So if there is a, a teacher out there or a parent that you just want your child to have a little bit of a story time, you can definitely find that on that page too. And then my show, in Los Angeles on KLCS, everybody with Angela Williamson. If they could follow me on all of those pages, I do keep the, it up to date. And um, in fact, I believe within the next month or two, I will be a season premiere for season three of everybody with Angela Williamson. The first interview on that with that season is Jack Canfield. Amazing. So as we sign off, any parting words you'd like to share with the audience? I'm just so honored to be part of this space with you and with your audience, because it's when I'm able to be in spaces like this, it uplifts me and it gives me the motivation to continue to move forward. And so I am deeply honored and thankful to be part of this space with you. Likewise. Thank you for all that you are doing in the world. Thank you for how you are showing up. Thank you for how you are keeping history alive. Thank you for how you are changing history and impacting generations to come. It has been an honor and a privilege. I cannot wait to see the uh, the live premiere, the in-person premiere. Count me in. I will be there with bells on. I know it is going to be phenomenal. Thank you so much for spending this time with us today. Till next time.